views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we do encourage you to like and share them on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere you can find the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. Each weekend right here, here's your host, Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. And um, I'm really excited to have Melanie Wiles with us today. She is the COO, the uh, Chief Organizational Officer. Is that Operating. Operating. (laughs) Yeah, well, she's she's the person that you call when you need to get something done right away, Officer. (laughs) of the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County. And, you know, as you well know, a lot of the nonprofit organizations that um, are in the child care arena are really at the forefront right now um, because there's still a need for taking care of our children. And Boys and Girls Club have really stepped up uh, during COVID-19, and um, I know personally, I'm grateful, not because I have kids in the program, but because I represent the other part of the children in St. Lucie County with their early education, and Boys and Girls Club has uh, the children from age five and, and, and up, and there are a lot of kids that need to be taken care of or that need uh not even if they're older and they don't need absolute taken care of, they still need assistance. They still need help. They still need to feel connected. And that's what the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County does. So welcome, Melanie. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all those wonderful compliments of how hard our teams have been working right now. You have. And and then, you know, from the virtual programs that you're producing for some of your club kids that are home, uh, to what is now going on at the Mid Florida uh, Convention Center, Civic event Center, center. Con- event center. Okay, it, it, I'm still getting used to the the sound of that, um, but that's the old Civic Center that's at uh, Walton Road in US One, and you've just just this last Monday opened up a new kind of camp experience but before the summer camp season really begins for children of all ages let's talk about that so we're very excited we're calling it our campathon because it isn't quite summer camp as you said we're still technically in school and so what we are offering for families is for children to come into a safe environment at the mid florida event center we have a one to nine ratio and basically it's mini clubs that we've set up within the event center. Um, There's nine children and one staff. They all have assigned areas and they're themed around animals. So we have the sloths, the elephants, the rhinoceroses, um, and the kids have tables in those rooms that are spaced six feet apart and they're six feet apart from each other for the kids. They have their own packets for their programming, which is their coloring supplies, scissors, everything each of the kids have individually. Um, So they're not sharing sharing utensils or crayons or colored pencils. And we also have, they get access to their electronic devices so that right now they are participating in their schoolwork. So um, both of my kids, my older kids are there right now. So this morning when I was there, they were completing all of their schoolwork and we have actually either early in the morning or late afternoon, we have teachers on staff as well that are helping the kids to complete that. So Good, because not everybody can do fourth grade math, I you know. know. Or third grade <laughs> in our case in my house. So, um, it's been a wonderful thing to see. The kids are so excited to be out of their homes and seeing friends again. Seeing the staff has been just wonderful for them. And Has it been hard to keep them from hugging everybody? It was, the first day, we really we really had to walk them through it. So yes. we basically do air elbows, yes. like just throw it up in the air. Um, the social distancing has been, we've gotten really creative with it. So for our teenagers, we where they do the wave mm-hmm. to show us how everybody has to be kept at an arm's length. Um, for the younger kids, they're using techniques like the windmill 
or they're saying airplanes so the kids are walking down the hall and they're keeping their hands stretched out. Um, we have stickers and markers on the floor for them so they know where to step while they're waiting in line or as they're moving down the hallways. We have one-way hallways that are divided. So we're doing everything possible to keep them safe to include breaks for hand washing and hand sanitation. Um, we have food. They're getting supplied breakfast and lunch as well. And this is all for $25 a week. I right? know. It's incredibly cheap. Of course, this is the pre-camp summer. Yes. Uh, prices, but still, it, it, it really makes it a, a no-brainer to have your child be a part of it, and, and people are signing up like crazy. Yes, we are currently on a wait list, but we're encouraging parents to go ahead and sign up to yeah. be on the wait list, because if we can open additional spaces, or as we pull from the wait list, um, we want to afford everyone that opportunity. So we want the role, we want the figures so we can try to keep supporting them. Um, so we're excited about it. The kids also have time to go outside and have some recreation, as well as we have different games rooms set up within the Mid Florida Event Center. And all of the equipment is sterilized. So, I mean, we're just doing everything we can to keep everybody um, in that safe environment. And we're really excited about the training our staff has received and all the effort that they're putting into that. So uh, to those of us who are uh, familiar with the inside of the Civic Center, so you have everything divided up into a lot of mini clubhouses because mm -hmm. you said, you know, nine children to a room um, and then one staff person. Is that one staff person per room? So, if I was going to walk a parent through what it looks like mm -hmm. to have their child attend, first you would bring your child in the morning, and we have um, drop offs until nine o'clock in the morning. We take every child's temperature and every staff's temperature before they even enter the building, and adults are not to come into the building. So we're trying to limit the amount of people in there, obviously. So they do the drop-off from yes. their car? Um, they, walk their, yeah. they walk the kids Okay, up. okay. Um, so we do the temperature check, and then everybody is escorted back to their room. So as I mentioned before, we actually have 25, 25. separate rooms. So for people that are used to it, they're the emerald room, the ruby room. They have uh -huh. the um, lobby. So we've literally like separated everything out. And then we have, um, it's five tables within each room. That are six foot apart. That are six foot yeah. apart. And, you know, it's nice. The kids have their designated space and they've really taken to it. So it's almost like a classroom, right? Yeah. They come in. They know exactly where they're supposed to sit. They have their supplies there that are waiting for them. They put their book bags down. They bring out their devices. We have charging stations for them. Um, you thought of everything. We, we, we you yeah. know, we're, we're moving through it. So, you, as you're listening to this show on the weekend, uh, you'll have just finished your first week of activity. And um, is is there anything else you didn't think of that you're just like you? was kind of an aha on Monday or Tuesday while you were in, in the midst of bringing kids in that you're thinking, oh, we got to do this too. Well, I think for us, it was the event center is so much larger than a typical clubhouse. So we've had to have a lot of additional staff just to be runners. So, mm -hmm. you know, you we do um, bathroom breaks and that type of thing. But in the middle of a program, if somebody has to go to the restroom, it's just going, being able to, like, navigate a 28,000 square foot facility <laughs> yes. to run across it. Yes. And it's really funny, as someone at that, and of course, you've been to some of our Boys and Girls Club events that yes. we've had there. Um, I can think back to cruising for a cause that we had and just having to walk that facility myself many times in heels and go from one end to the other, and now you're thinking about you have to bring kids from one end to the other. So that was one of our aha moments of just how many people it was going to take to make sure that, at least until we lay the groundwork, mm -hmm. um, until everyone familiarizes themselves. There's a lot of steps happening. I wish we could all wear those little, um, what is it? St the Fitbits yes. types. Of the I mean, we're definitely getting our exercise in, yeah. kids and well, you know, if the, for the adults and the older kids, if they're carrying their phone, they can be tracking their steps, too. You should have some type of award for the I one that should. has the most. You know what? Talk to Stephanie Meyer at uh, the health department because she could put, set up something special just for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? They're, they're not. And then yeah. walking within the facility and then even going outside the the 
city of Port St. Lucie has been a phenomenal partner with this. Um, awesome. For them to be able to uh, have this partnership with the facility and then the fact of the outside grounds as well. It's such a beautiful place. So whether it's on the concrete or some of the grass areas, um, it's been really great. The kids are really enjoying themselves and it's been beautiful. I, I was just going to say, you could not have asked for better weather, considering it's the middle of May. I know, it's really nice. Yeah, just, we're, we're getting spoiled. At the There's such a nice, cool breeze. It almost feels like the air is air-conditioned. Yes, it does. Uh, so uh, you really have, and the kids are happy to be out, and certainly the parents are probably home getting a lot of stuff done or at the office uh, as, you know, People are starting to get back into business as we uh, move through stage one and get used to, you know, how things are, are going to happen because it's going to be gradual. It has to be gradual. Yeah, I think it was very eye-opening for me because we work with so many small business partners, large business partners, um, and we all think about for ourselves, what does it look like to be a parent right now and with your workload? So some of us are fortunate to be at home with our kids and tr try to work from home and try to manage that piece and that's difficult too so even parents that are at home right now with their kids like we're encouraging them to send their kids as well because we get it like you're on zoom meetings all day you're doing what you need to do but um, Tuesday in particular I ran into one parent and it was it was very inspiring because she told me that this has just been such a lifesaver for her family she does hair so she was able to go oh, back yeah. to work at her salon and for her to be able to send her child for $25 a week. And she said, I was finally able to make ends meet and make that money. That was Monday. Mm -hmm. She's telling me this on Tuesday. And she said how grateful she was and how much that was going to mean for her and her family. Uh, and so absolutely. she can't work from home. And so for her no. to, to go back to work and to be able to provide, it just, it was a game changer. It's probably a game changer, changer for the people whose hair she cut, too. Yes, <laughs> we're all very grateful right now. And, and, and we're all, you know, we're using our sanitizer. We're uh, social distancing. We're wearing masks. And, you know, uh, Melanie and I are, you know, six foot apart, so not, we're not wearing a mask. But I know I have several in my briefcase that I carry with me, and... I wear them whenever I need to, when I, especially if I'm in a crowded situation. Um, I, I, I know this is kind of the, like, it feels like life has been on hold for a couple of months, um, but not for everybody. Uh, for, for the folks at Boys and Girls Club, you know, they've been busy coming up with ideas um, because you opened on Monday, but there was a whole lot that had to be planned and played out before you were able to open your doors. Yes, and so I would say once we let out for spring break in March is when everything, you know, started unfolding in this mm -hmm. community for COVID-19. So our first layer that happened really was the basic needs for our, our families. So we had a we had our first initial thought was, okay, let's get the kids fed. So that was our first phase. Um, we went immediately to providing meals to families that they could pick up at our clubs. And those were family style meals or peanut butter and jelly, um, some staple items that they could keep in their pantries. And that's how everything started for us to be able to keep in contact with some of our families and to be able to immediately mobilize to help them. So that was, we, we kind of just did a timeline for ourselves to keep track of how much have we done. At this point, we've served over 75,000 meals to the community. And, you know, you've, you've had partners that you couldn't have done it without, like Treasure Coast Food Bank. Absolutely. Um, because, and, and then you've also had a lot of restaurants who have stepped up to give you free food um, to, to distribute, but your locations are perfect for getting the food out. Mm -hmm. And you've had uh, volunteers from the community coming and, and still safe social distancing, no more than 10 volunteers at a time, um, helping uh, to get the food out immediately um, for, you know, dinner time. And I know the school district and has 
also uh, partnered with getting food out immediately um, at lunchtime. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the the kids have, at first it was five days a week, and now they've moved to just Tuesdays and Thursdays, but they give multi-meals. Are you still doing the meals every evening, or are you doing multiple distribution to multi- multi-meal distribution? So right now we are feeding every day of the week, but we've changed it a little bit. So we moved from our original model, which was just our clubhouses. And like you said, we are in some very critical locations, yes. but we were very fortunate. Number one, we were gifted um, from an anonymous donor, a $50,000 gift recently to serve families in Fort Pierce. Wow! So that sparked some great conversation and some additional partnerships. And so what we have started is Operation Dinner Table. And what that is, is a collective impact group, which is mainly um, Children's Services Council, their other after school programs and their other funded programs. We all meet on a weekly basis. And what everybody we call at our dinner table, everybody's come to the table and told us how many families do they have to feed? um, What are some other needs that they have? And then together as a group, we've come together and said, okay, we're going to offer these meals on these evenings. And each of the agencies is actually they pick up meals from us or local restaurants that we've Mm -hmm. reinvested the money back into. And then we're having a culminating um, distribution on May 30th, where we're going to give large, it's going to be thousands of boxes of um, toiletries, groceries, some games for families to play together, coloring books, puzzles, 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 resources, masks for families, Mm -hmm. things that we heard from this group of people that this is what our families need. So it's really neat. We all get on this Zoom call every week and say, all right, what is it that our families are looking for? So it was one week, it may have been pizza. It could have been barbecue another week. Um, this week, I believe it's St. Lucie Draft House and Tuta Fresco that's providing the meals, like big family mm-hmm. meals. So it's been really nice for a group to come together and say, this is what we're seeing and what we're hearing. And on the 30th, we're all going to have that big volunteer event where everybody is going to be bringing these boxes out into the community. Community. And the people that you're going to be giving the boxes to are all already signed up through the different agencies. Yes, they're all families that we know very closely that need these services. Um, we've also been very fortunate. I know that you've met Sarah also from with GL mm-hmm. Homes. Yes. Um, they actually put the funding up to be able to do the same thing in Port St. Lucie simultaneously. So we're very excited to be able to offer this to both cities, to all of our families that we know need That's this. awesome. So if somebody is listening and they want to hear more about it, either how they could help or if they know a family that needs help, how do they, who do they get in touch with? They can get in touch with the Boys and Girls Club or um, they can visit our website because, again, we're taking volunteers for these or some of our local Children's Services Council funded programs if they know they already receive some sort of service from them, whether it's family families of the Treasure Coast or um, Multicultural Resource Center. If they're served by one of those agencies already, they can definitely reach out to them and set up a time when they can get some of the food from them. That's awesome. And it, it's a, you know important to realize that everybody has a different situation that they're dealing with at home, and there's no telling um, what somebody has got going on in their home situation. You don't know. Um, what they're dealing with, then you don't know what they're doing, dealing with job wise. And if they are unlucky enough to be out of a job, then they, then they're still they n- may need inexpensive child care so they can uh, go out and look for a job now that the economy is in stage one. Um, and uh, the other thing that that strikes me that was a great partnership was with the restaurants because they had this period of time where they had all this food ordered mm-hmm. and they they had to be closed except for doing restaurant pickup and delivery and and that was only a percentage of their usual business so it was a perfect partnership for them to come and and provide food for for your needs for uh, the collaborations needs 
to provide to the community mm -hmm. uh, the the different types of food. And, you know, maybe they get some new fans for their restaurants that way, too. Yeah. I mean, the, the restaurants have supported us for so many years, and we already had so many of those partnerships built. So we were really happy to be able to invest some of the funds that we were receiving as well so we could feed additional families. And then one thing that we were able to do during those first critical weeks was to feed our staff dinner. So they were there on site um, serving the essential employees children for many weeks. We still have them in our clubs, in our neighborhood clubs. And people don't think about that. What is, I mean, when you're working until seven, eight o'clock at night, so how are you getting fed? How are you feeding your family? So we were able to give family meals to our own employees to take home. That was one less thing that they didn't have to worry about. So they could be on the front line and they became frontline workers themselves. And they were in central employees because they were keeping everything going for these healthcare workers, for the firefighters, for the police officers, for all these people that work with the county. Um, we needed to be there for their kids so they could go do their jobs and keep everything running smoothly in this community. And I know that you used the clubhouses at that time mm -hmm. uh, for to, to be up and running for those essential workers. And when we talk about essential workers, you're talking about the first responders and the healthcare workers and the hospital workers. You know, knock on wood, we've been really, really blessed that, you know, we didn't face what places like New York did. Mm -hmm. But at the time, we are setting things up to provide for people we didn't know that it wasn't going to be that severe and it was it was really a scary look ahead to see that that could happen that could be around the corner for us um so you have had y you you're still having first responders and um the health care providers you're still offering scholarships for their children to attend through the clubhouses. Yes. Um, St. Lucie County is actually offering that program and we're partnered with them. Um, we also received additional funding from a grant from the Mortgage Family Foundation that is a great partner with um, our county as well. So they stepped up and they gave a grant and then the county on top of that. So that program goes, um, they have to get cleared through the county to be able to receive the free child care at this point. Um, but that's been going on for several weeks now. The kids are amazing. A lot of them are new to Boys and Girls Club, so it was kind of funny to walk in, especially on an evening when the parent's coming to pick them up, and they're like, I don't want to go home. I'm having so much fun. So we feel like we've made a lot of new friends yeah. with those parents and with those kids as well, and they've learned what Boys and Girls Club is all about, and we're excited to keep that going. And just on a side note, in the last two weeks, um, the the state of Florida, the Office of Early Learning, has offered through the local Early Learning Coalition's scholarship tuition for the first responders and the hospital workers for those children that are five and under, birth through five, because, of course, at the Boys and Girls Club and through St. Lucie County, they didn't have the licensing mm -hmm. to be able to take care of those younger children. And um, and uh, that so the child care centers are now, um, they're, they're being paid uh, by the state through the Early Learning Coalition to pay for those kids that are uh, the children of first responders and, and hospital workers, which works out, turns around and works out well for the child care centers because they were really hurting um, because there were so many people that were the private pay people that were keeping their kids home mm -hmm. and still are. Um, so, you know, it, it it's it's great to see how in a pinch in in a crisis in a pandemic that that the different parts of um, our government and our nonprofit organizations come together and provide solutions for for what we need when we need need it and certainly you know really boys and girls club has been at at a forefront they've immediately you know stepped up and said need food we'll take we'll help take care of it need something else we'll help take care of it and, and now you know child care for for everybody now that we're in stage one um, of returning to work 
gift for people who are the hairdressers and the restaurant workers and the people who, uh, and a, a lot of them, you know, there's no way they can take their kid to work. Mm-hmm. That, that can't happen. Um, but then again, you know, as you pointed out, you also have the people who are trying to do work from home. And, you know, <laughs> they keep muting their Zoom calls. <laughs> But there's a lot of really interesting things that are going on behind the scenes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the one thing, I mean, I love this county and I think that you, you hit the nail on the head because they, they really acted quickly to come together. And for, as a boys and girls clubs, we couldn't have done what we did without having the support behind the scenes. So even the consortium that came together through the community foundation Mm -hmm. of Martin and St. Lucie, I mean, they put together this giving circle and it's the children's services council, the United way, United way, um, Cleveland clinic impact 100, there was so many Bank of America, they all stepped up and said, you know, we're going to put money into this piece so that you can so that the uh, the nonprofits really had direct support right away, which enabled us to really think out of the box and get other partnerships and leverage the dollars so that we can keep doing what we're doing. So there is a lot behind the scenes. Well, and that's the thing is there are a lot of people whose job is to raise the money and bring the money in, but unless you're spending it wisely mm-hmm. and unless you're giving it to organizations who have the experience to know how to deal with uh, food distribution, with um, with child care, with um, virtual connections. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so speaking of virtual connections, let's talk for just a minute about some of your team members who stepped up and did something different during a period of time where a lot of the kids were at home and especially your clubhouse kids Mm -hmm. who you know your clubhouses were closed for the regular clubhouse kids and um, you wanted to make sure that you kept those connections going tell me about what you did with that so we have our virtual club Um, there's two different methods that we deliver so the first is if you visit boys and girls clubs of st lucie county our website um, you can see what our virtual plan is every week so we have We start each day off with a club code. And I don't know if we've gotten you yet, Sue Ellen. You need to be one of our guest club coders. You you like read the pledge and the the code of... Yeah, yeah. it's our club code that our kids are used to starting their day off with. So we have celebrities every day that do that. Um, Then we go into a couple different activities throughout the day. So we usually do a fitness activity. We do an arts and craft activity. Uh, maybe we'll have a steam activity. Sometimes we bring in a guest. So we've had Harbor Branch FAU do some marine biology with our oh, kids. Oh, I saw that one. As a matter of fact, I think I shared it on, on our Facebook too. Yeah, we've had some partners come in, yeah. the Manatee Center. Um, we've had some different, Lindsay School of the Arts has worked with us on some pieces as well. So we try to keep it active, not so academic, more of enrichment. And because we know the kids are in school all day doing their work with their parents and we wanted to give them some other opportunities Mm -hmm. to do some other fun things throughout the day. And that way maybe the parents can put something on TV and let the kids, they can go cook dinner while the kids are doing art with Kayla or they're doing a special workout with Miss Caitlin. Yeah, I was going to say, I have shared a lot of Miss Caitlin's workouts too because a lot of the things she's doing are applicable for you for younger kids too and it's a nice little thing for parents to do with their younger children to you know get their energy out when they're trying to take a work break and some of the younger kids they're not in school all day they're just Mm -hmm. and they're the siblings yes (laughs) we in our house we're all partaking in the activities but it's neat because even the little kids are watching their older siblings and they follow along with uh-huh. the workouts or maybe they're trying to do their piece with the art. So it's really nice because it's something that the whole family can do together, especially the story time 
walking the kids through as they're reading the book to them. And maybe it's something that they have at their house already, or it's a new book that after the fact, they'll say, Oh, I want to go get that book so that we could read that together. So it's been a wonderful platform to be able to connect back with our families. And then we've taken it a step further because we do zoom meetings with each of our clubhouses. So we have 20 locations and each of our club directors keeps in touch with their families. And they've actually been able to supply program materials for them. So they may do a pickup or a drop off where they're going to do a cooking show and they actually get those supplies to the kids. And then they, as the director um, and some of the other program specialists will conduct something twice a week to keep in touch with their kids. It's really neat. So each of the clubhouses, all those different organizations, they have their own little Zoom meetings where they're just involving their regular kids. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. It keeps us connected. And then they do it based on what the kids like for that. So, you know, the teenagers, um, we actually had a really cool activity when we were giving the food out one day. Um, we had somebody that provided, I think it was 300 subs, and we were able to, it was Jersey Mike's, and we were able to bring the teens, they picked the subs up, but at the same time we said, all right, let's all sign up for this zoom. And they were doing TikToks together. They're doing actually giving back to their community in some ways too. So we're thinking of innovative ways for each group, each age group, especially of what they enjoy. And then we're going from there. So you're going to continue to do the virtual uh, zooms mm -hmm. for the clubhouses when do you foresee the clubhouses being able to open back up I know in the next couple of weeks we are going to be reopening our neighborhood clubs to our normal membership but those kids that are typically in our school clubs a lot of them mm -hmm. are at the mid Florida event center right now right because they can't go to the school so yeah. yeah and um, we're looking for additional space to be able to serve more kids so we know that we're not there because we have thousands mm -hmm. uh, we have have typically this past year we served 4,600 club members so you're talking thousands of kids so we're we're able to do a little bit on site and then the rest of them we will be doing virtually so we have th summer themes so for the next we have 13 weeks of themes laid out and what you'll see is whatever happens on site that same thing is going to happen virtually so yeah. whether it's Star Wars theme or um, America theme or whatever it's going to be the kids that are at home are going to feel the same thing as the kids that are on site and then what I talked about with some of those zoom activities we're going to mm -hmm. keep it all um, the same theme and all the kids will be able to have some wonderful experience during that week that sounds awesome and uh, can people who aren't clubhouse kids also be a part of some of the virtual learning do they Yes, absolutely. That? Anyway, anyone that wants to go on our website or visit our Facebook page, they can access any of those programs. I at know any I'm time. one of your your club kids. Yeah, <laughs> you're, I, there you go. Yeah, I do access. This, this uh, stuff, that, yeah. that was our goal. It's just really to yeah. offer something for the yeah. whole community, not just just a couple thousand. It's anyone, any adult, anybody that wants to log on and experience something of what it means to be a Boys and Girls Club member. Well, let's talk for a minute uh, about the lessons that that everybody is walking away with it there's people that are bemoaning the th everything that the kids don't get and it is sad if you were graduating this year that you didn't get you know a proper graduation and you may not have gotten a, a prom but there's so much that I think that the kids from this year that were old enough to understand what was going on are going to walk away with that as a plus. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it, I think, is is a greater understanding of what giving to the community means and a greater appreciation of some of those um, those essential workers, which, you know, we've been talking about the hospital workers and we've been talking about the first responders. But, you know, there's also the grocery uh store clerks the the stock people there um the the walmart and and sam's and bj's and all these and all of the places that that helped us keep some type of normalcy in our house mm -hmm. i don't know about your house but we've really counted on food um <laughs> yes, we yes. Go to, the grocery store has been a very critical <laughs> 
part of our yes. lives. <laughs> and and um, and and I think that we have just such a greater appreciation of people like that and the child care workers, the the team members of the Boys and Girls Club, um, the other organizations that have really stepped up, you know, organizations like Graceway Village and the Treasure Coast Food Bank and um, and uh, nonprofit uh, groups, clubs like the Fort Pierce Women's Club. Oh, they've been amazing. Yeah, they're just like, and there's just a handful of them that are getting out there and making it happen. And um, these are women who have other careers that you know they they might be working during the day but they're figuring out a way to feed other people's children and families when they can so um, all of these uh, the volunteers the people who stepped up I think our kids are getting a greater understanding and appreciation of you know how it takes a village Mm -hmm. it is I think the beauty of it of what's been happening is what you just said all of the wonderful people that really stepped up and stepped out just to do something a little extra I just went last week Um, there's a wonderful group of ladies at Ocean Village there's a sewing circle and every single day they're sewing masks hundreds and hundreds of masks and um I know that Susan is the one that has been in contact with us and bringing us those masks. But what we want those people to realize is that they have been getting specific fabric that's kid friendly because when our staff, which all of our staff wears masks, when they're in contact with these kids, and that could be really scary the first time a child is leaving their home, going into a boys and girls mm-hmm. club, and everyone has a mask on. And the fact that the ones that we had on today as I walked in, it was little monsters or polka dots or Superman, you know, that makes a huge difference for them. And the fact that these ladies in the sewing circle are diligently working every day to make that. And looking for the kids' yeah. material to to be able to, to do that. Um, and, and it is uh, one of our child care centers uh, last week, uh, they were doing sock masks with the kids. Oh, nice. Um, and it, it was really cute to see them and yeah god god help them they're little some of them are really little and um they they had they were so proud of their little sock bass and and they had um th- they were wearing them like maybe not exactly the over right their eyes place. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know they get it they understand the importance of you know so so i think i think our, even our little kids are going to walk away from this with a greater understanding of, of sanitary practices. Mm-hmm. So there's a, I, I, looking for the, the gold at the end of the rainbow and uh, the, the silver lining through the situation. I, I, I think there's a lot of things that we have that we, we should be grateful for. Um, so we'll, we'll, we don't know, you don't know, I don't know when business as usual is going to, you know. So he's like me at the Early Learning Coalition. I keep pushing our family fun fair that was supposed to happen in April. And it's now, you know, scheduled in the middle of, of September. But it's going to probably look a little different than, you know, a big crowd of families all running around, you know, t- together. Um, and you've got chili cook-off coming mm-hmm. up even sooner than that in July. So. Yes. So we are, chili cook-off is still happening. It's just going to happen differently. And so we we talked a lot about that because a lot of people are pushing their events. Yeah. And when I say <laughs> event, I mean like that's the, the crowds of people, right? Yeah. Or the fundraising piece. So um as a organization, it was very important for us to keep chili cook off when it typically is over the summer for a couple of reasons. Um, Cause you have other things scheduled. Number right? one. Yes. Yeah. You know, we have things to do, but yeah. number one, um, we are going to be doing it in an innovative way where we're really incorporating the virtual piece with a culminating event of some sort where people can safely participate. Everyone mm-hmm. can safely participate because everyone says, 
when's chili cook off? I mean, it's, it's their favorite event and Mm -hmm. it's their favorite way, but just like we've been talking about how the community, the community has rallied around coming together and supporting each other right now. That's what chili cook off is all about. Mm -hmm. Really what it is, is so many different individuals, so many different teams that are already pre fundraising that are already all in their own arena, doing something to give back to boys and girls club. Um, The important thing for us is that people understand right now, the funding that goes from chili cook off is helping for us to sustain throughout the summer for our kids and to provide those camps for them that they have right now. And that's an important point to make because a lot of things that are, you know, you're raising money for now and that people are coming and helping during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, when, when we come out on the other side, we're still going to have organizations that have to be run that have their normal everyday activities and some of the usual places that uh, some of the nonprofits receive money for may be tapped out Mm -hmm. and so it's even more important than ever for us to come together as a community and and support you know, the Boys and Girls Club and other organizations. A, a lot of organizations are taking their events virtually uh, as a race director. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing, you know, the entire, you know, spring, summer cleared of, of races. And we moved our Sailfish Beer Mile into November um, because there's not really any way to do that without having, you know, we can divide it into smaller groups, but they're still going to, want beer and we'll use the sanitary <laughs> uh, ways. But um, but as far as other, you're seeing all of these organizations post virtual races and post virtual events and Habitat for Humanity even did um, a virtual fundraising. Um, it was not a breakfast, but a, a series of events one week. And, you know, we're learning. We're you know, those of us who are involved in community organizations are learning to stretch our limits and stretch mm-hmm. our our uh, ability to do things virtually. And um, I'm glad to hear that Chili Cook-Off is going to continue because it is. It's, you know, some people have already planned, you know, it, it was supposed to be the 25th celebration. And, and speaking of which, <laughs> one of the other things that got canceled in april was your big blowout 25th (laughs) anniversary celebration and you know we are our goals for the 25th anniversary were to um to reach 25,000 people and we were going to have this event at the mid florida event center and we had all of these celebrities involved to include jim clark who's the ceo of boys and girls clubs of america and we were going to get the whole community engaged and Last week, as I did our dry run walkthrough of the Mid Florida Event Center with our kids there, I just sat back and thought to myself, you know what? We still did it. It just did we it still a way. <laughs> we still have reached we've reached twenty five thousand people yeah. because we've done the virtual club and the outreach services and engaged the community to give back through food, through our camps, through supporting our kids right now. It just looks different. Mm -hmm. And, you know. It's certainly going to be a 25th year (laughs) to remember, isn't it? Yes. And we did something really fun on April 24th when our event was supposed to happen. We did a little ding ding dong doorbell dash. So we went and thanked so many of our contributors, our 25th anniversary committee members, people in the community. We went and dropped Um, these packages off at their doorbell and we had a fun video on there. Um, Jim Clark, the president of Boys and Girls Club of America, did a nice video for us talking about thanking us and our and our staff members, which I just want to say I'm so impressed with our youth development professionals that have thought so far out of the box on how we can help our families right now. Um, But he did a special thank you video to them because they're really, they're the boots on the ground right now making Mm -hmm. all of this happen. And we couldn't do it without them. And I know there's so many other organizations and one of those other beautiful silver linings that's coming out right now 
people are being so innovative about their thoughts and how they can really impact the community in a different way. And I think that this has stretched people to their Mm -hmm. limits and it's amazing and beautiful what's come out of it. And, you know, people who thought that they did, they couldn't be creative. They Mm -hmm. couldn't go beyond what they had already planned. They had found that they could. And, um, this it's kind of exciting and uh, it's very, um, very exciting for w- whether you're a kid in a program or an adult that was working from home or an adult that uh, unfortunately got cut back. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can see that people are, are trying and making an effort to, to make things better. And, you know, there's something to be said for knowing that somebody else is watching out for you no matter how old you are. Absolutely. We haven't talked about, you know, I know you, as Boys and Girls Club, you deal mostly with boys and girls. Um, But another population that, um, you know, has really um, been helped by organizations like the Women's Club and Graceway is the senior population. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the senior population who've had to stay at home and, you know, senior, senior is just a number. That's the age. It, it's whatever it is. It's always going to be 20 years older than I am. So <laughs> no worries there because you're just a young thing. Um, but they, they've also been able to see the, the caring and the giving yeah. from the community. And um, they've been able to virtually, you know, a lot of the seniors have been um, able to see what's going on in the c- community either through their what they they're watching on TV or through um, their computers and you know they've taken a step ahead as far as being connected virtually too so there's kind of a silver lining for that community as well yeah there's all these different connections that are being made through different generations there are and and it, it you know is it is it's seriously going to be something that we look back on you know, 10 years from now, um, and we'll, we'll say, you know, where were you when, when this happened? Where did you live? And, you know, how did you react? And, and what was your life like? Um, and, you know, we were kind of forced to slow down a little bit for um, what we're doing. Um, and I, I see that, you know, people are coming up with new and innovative ideas every day and um, people that maybe didn't volunteer before are coming up um, and and offering to volunteer or if there's somebody who's not comfortable being out of the house and being around other people even in a socially distant situation um, they're behind the scenes doing some work behind the scenes meanwhile so boys and girls club You know, if you're listening to the show and you'd like your kids to uh, be a part of what's going on um, as far as either the virtual clubhouse information, you can go to the website Mm -hmm. um, and there you have a very active Facebook page and other social media. Um, So you can connect in many different ways through Instagram and Twitter as well. And uh, you also have uh, the Mid Florida Something event center. center. Event center. It's event that I'm not connecting. Probably because there's no events right now. So we yeah. are. The event is us having a yes, camp there. Yes, that <laughs> is an event, um, and and that is going on um, Monday through Friday, and uh, you can find out more and get your kids on a wait list for that by contacting the Boys and Girls Club either by email or by phone four six zero nine nine one eight. Yes. Yes. Um, it's of course area code seven seven two. Uh, Melanie, if you wanted to reach out and thank, you know, just one more person or one more group of people, who would it be? Who is? Um, who are you I grateful think. For? Well, I do. I want to thank our club founders first of all. Um, I know that we earlier we had a meeting, and actually one of our club founders just recently passed away this week, Mr. Chuck Hill. Um, he, he had this vision years and years ago to start a boys and girls club. And 
you know, looking back at this week and where we're at and supporting the kids, I think he'd be very proud of what the legacy was that he brought. So I want to start off by thanking our supporters um, that founded this. You're a previous board member as well. And we have a very strong board that's set us up to be successful at this time, um, as well as our strategic partners and some of our partners like A&G Concrete Pools, Southeast Elevators, um, Southern Eagle Distributing, those people that have, they invested in us and things like having vehicles at this time that have got, have enabled us to deliver food. So our GL Homes bus, it was originally meant for kids to go on field trips this summer. Well, guess what? We're delivering food. We're going to be doing pop-up clubs so that we can reach kids in parks and libraries and other locations. Um, so those people that really over the years have put their money and invested in our youth and put us to be in a strong place to be able to roll these things out, um, that's who I want to say thank you to because that's who's made us strong as an organization and that's going to keep us continuing to go in the right direction. And then for people who previously hadn't been involved, they, they see the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County in a whole new light. Yeah. Yeah, because you know when... When somebody needs something that you you want to call somebody that you can count on. You, Absolutely. You want to make sure that, you know, you've got the information. So, so again, uh, Facebook page, Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County. And, uh, you, or you can Twitter or, or Instagram or, am I missing? LinkedIn. <laughs> 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 Someone told me the other day, um, that that uh, the Early Learning Coalition didn't have a LinkedIn account. I'm like, really? I mean, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so just one more social media icon. Yes, we can. Well, do you that. need to have a TikTok account now. <laughs> oh, we do not have one of those, and I, I think that's probably going to be the next step. Um, but there's a, a a lot of things that you know, as as your your team is working together and your sponsors um, are working together uh, to come up with new ideas and um, make things easier for uh, people in, in general, whether it's feeding the families or whether it's helping to make connections with other agencies and being the conduit, you know, to the different agencies that can provide help. Um, we know that, you know, the Boys and Girls Club is here. And if you were already planning to be involved for Chili Cook-Off, that's still mm -hmm. going to be, it's gonna, still going to be a thing. So uh, Melanie Wiles has been my guest today, and she is the COO of Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County. Um, she is part of a team of, of really hardworking people who have really stepped up during COVID-19. Um, and, you know, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of other great stuff coming from you. Thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you next week with more. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show, weekends on WPSL. Go to WPSL.com, click on Schedule to find out when the next Sue Ellen Sanders Show comes your way. And then check out the archives on YouTube. Look for WPSL TV on YouTube or simply go to WPSLTV.com for all of our YouTube archives, including the Sue Ellen Sanders Show right here on WPSL. Port St. Lucie.